This is the Susato Dublin E, E major, not, not E flat, E. Normally this wouldn't follow my rule of inexpensive whistles under $30, but Sasato has discontinued the Dublin line in favor of their newer line, the Oriole. They discontinued it a couple of years ago. I managed to pick this one up off my friend Joe Cook for, I think I paid him 20 bucks for it. I have my issues with this whistle. I, I, I actually love it for a number of reasons. It's very loud. So loud that I had to decrease the volume on these clips by about 10% because the audio was distorting and clipping. It's, it's a high whistle, it's shrill, but it's got a nice bird-like tone and, and I love it. You may gather if you've been watching the last couple of videos that I'm not concerned with playing these tunes perfectly. I just want to hit the notes, get through the sequence in a take or two, and, and get on with talking about the whistle. I had to do a few takes with this one, and I still didn't get all the notes out right. So far, my experience with this Sasato and other plastic Sasato clones is that all the ones I've had so far have difficulties in the upper octave. Somewhere around the G note, which would actually be the A on the E whistle, but this third hole, sometimes the fifth hole in the upper octave, unless you hit the breath just right, there's a warble or a buzz or, or it'll miss the note. It, it kind of sounds like something that happens like a, I wasn't in band, but people I knew in band called it a splia, where they would, on their clarinet, they would hit the reed too hard and it'd go, Aah! or or like a child playing a recorder. You get a weird buzz and this harmonic thing that happens. If I practiced with this whistle every time I played, I would eventually get it. And I do love the tone of this whistle overall. I also like that it's ABS plastic. It is not going to bend. It's probably not going to break unless you absolutely stomp on it or shut it in a car door. Weather has no real effect on it. It doesn't matter if you leave this thing in the freezer. Humidity, no issues. A good plastic whistle or PVC whistle maybe is good to have around because you're not going to get a huge pitch fluctuation from temperature differences or, or anything like that. And man, if you want volume, this this is great. And I would actually consider a whistle like this kind of in that session whistle range because it's going to stand up there in the mix. The best application for these ABS whistles, as far as I'm concerned, is in the bottom octave and the bottom half of the second octave. Because, yeah, once you, once you get up into here in the second octave, uh, it's really hit or miss, and the notes are really shrill. In essence, do I think this whistle is a, a good starter whistle? No. Simply because it is very loud. It is hard to nail down those notes in the upper octave. And also, this particular model, being E natural, is in kind of a weird key that you don't find many other traditional musicians playing in unless you're going to be maybe trying to jam with a Spanish guitarist or something that's not necessarily the usual Irish trad kind of stuff. I use it because I play a lot of guitar and I also have this weird tendency to write things in C sharp minor, which is the relative minor of E. So it, it works for me, but like I said earlier, one would have to practice on this whistle all the time in order to really nail down the air requirement and the, the amount of pressure that will enable you to hit those upper range notes correctly, consistently. In actuality, the Sasato one isn't that bad. 
in later videos when I do the Attack of the Clones, then you're going to really hear that out-of-tune recorder buzz in some of those upper register notes. So that's it for me in the Sasado Dublin E for this week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week with a different whistle.